Liam Fox is the former Defence Secretary who warned back in 2010 of the threat of state-on-state -state warfare from Russia. And he's here to discuss Putin's latest manoeuvres. Dr Fox, do you, do you feel vindicated by these events? No, but I think a lot of people have been saying for a long time that uh, Putin respects only two things, consistency and strength, and the West has not shown either of them in very great measure. We saw the cyber attack on Estonia, a, a NATO partner, we did nothing. Russia invaded Georgia, we effectively did nothing. And we saw Russia backing Syria, even when Syria used chemical weapons, and famously with the red lines drawn by President Obama, we did nothing again. That sends a lot of signals to someone like Putin who is effectively a bully and runs a thuggish regime that the West will not stand up to his, uh, his actions. You, you describe an escalation though, in a, in a sense. There are they're, they're, they're three examples of the same problem. There's not necessarily a, an increase in, in Putin's boldness or Putin's uh, appetite for a fight. I, I would disagree. I mean, I think that there is an escalation there between uh, a cyber attack on Estonia and the annexation of Crimea. But he uh, went into Georgia. He went into Georgia. Uh, he's got uh, an occupation force effectively still there, although we don't call it an occupation force. But what else do you call it when foreign forces are on your sovereign territory, develop military bases and refuse to leave? He, he's done this interesting thing, hasn't he, where he, he, he defines his role as defending all people of a Russian ethnicity. And that, in a sense, offers an alternative to the, to the sovereign state uh, description of the, of the world. I think that is to absolutely nail the issue because Putin has two views which are incompatible with our view of the world. The first is to say that uh, Russia has a sphere of influence uh, and uh, we in the West believe that sovereign nations should be the arbiters of their own destiny. They are incompatible views. And the second, as you correctly say, is that he has said that ethnic Russians are not to be protected by the countries in which they live or their laws or their constitution or their governments, but by an external power i.e. Russia. That blows a hole in everything that we understand in terms of international law and international norms since World War II. But it plays brilliantly at home, of course. It, it appeals to the nationalistic fervor that gives him approval ratings that, that probably only Kim Jong-un can beat at the moment in, in, in the world. And so perhaps would your desire to deploy troops on the ground in eastern Ukraine, that, that would add to the nationalistic fervor that's building up in Moscow and keeping Putin, some would say, in power. Well, I never said to deploy troops in Eastern Ukraine. But, I beg your pardon, I Eastern, said Eastern Europe. Europe yes. uh, inside the NATO, the NATO powers where there are ethnic Russians and where the Putin doctrine would say we are free to intervene when we want. And I think it's also very important to understand that the smaller NATO members, uh, particularly the Baltic states, who have, uh, in some cases, very high numbers of ethnic Russians, are very worried about this doctrine being perpetrated upon them. We therefore, have, I think, have a duty to maintain our, our uh, cohesion as an alliance. So I would like to see, I'd like to see more NATO exercises in places like Eastern Europe and in the Black Sea, and I'd like to see a permanent NATO strength on the ground in the Baltic states. But he won't back down, will he? he? He can't back down, because if he backs down, he loses his power base at home, which is built upon the, the Russian bear bowing to nobody. That is to fail, I think, to understand our own doctrine of deterrence, which is to say, we are having a show of strength here, which is to stop you taking actions that we find unacceptable. And the trouble is that because of our own lack of understanding and our unwillingness to uh, apply the concept of deterrence, we have seen what happened in Estonia, we've seen what happened in Georgia, and we've seen what happened in the Ukraine. So it's, time for, it's time for us to actually uh, to show some far greater moral strength than we've shown in the West for some time. So weak leadership then from, from David Cameron and, and other Western leaders, do you, think, do you think that applies also to the situation in, in Gaza at the moment? I think the situation in Ukraine is, is of far greater importance in terms of our national security and in the longer term safety of Europe and the NATO alliance. I think in terms of what happens in Gaza, the government's response has been, has been reasonable and sensible. And I think that one of the problems that we have in an era where the debate is very much media driven is that we're looking at the symptoms of the conflict rather than the causes. 
And I have a lot of trouble with this word proportionate. What's a proportionate response? It's, it's interesting you mention that because you, you say the government has been reasonable. That's elements of the government. The Deputy Prime Minister, of course, is quite happy to use the word disproportionate. Well, I think, when I think of the government, I think of the, the Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary and the Defence Secretary, because they are the ones primarily responsible for uh, national security. What will happen in a year's time uh, is another matter. Uh, I think that uh, what is clear is that we have an underlying problem. The underlying problem is that Israel has a neighbor at Gaza where Hamas believes that Israel should not exist. Indeed. And as long I, as I, they continue with that belief, it's very difficult to see how you can get a political solution. Uh, we're, we're receiving reports this evening of, of American airstrikes in northern Iraq. Um, that presumably tallies with, with your desire for a show of strength in these, in these sort of trouble spots. Would you like to see British uh, service personnel, British aircraft get involved in that? I don't think there's a case for that as long as the Americans are taking the lead given that they've got far greater military capability. I think if the United States is involved and is trying to deal with the physical capabilities uh, of ISIS, uh, that is a good thing because what is required is the ability to degrade their military capability to the point that the governments in the region, particularly the government of Iraq, is able to deal with them themselves. I, I should stress those reports currently unconfirmed and, and the Pentagon have issued a denial. But, but you, you, you sound like a man who wants to see more war. No. What I want to see is the containment of those who are slaughtering innocents, as you showed in your previous report, who are using religious persecution as a tool of their political and military doctrine. And we do have a responsibility um, as people who believe in, in freedom and security and a rule of law to stand up for those who are being very obviously persecuted in areas where we could make a difference. Let, let, let me ask you about a battle that's altogether less bloody, the battle that may unfold at the top of your party, the Conservative Party. Do you think that the, the brouhaha surrounding Boris Johnson's desire to return to Westminster speaks of a, of a belief that the, the next election is already lost. He wants to be the leader of the opposition and he wants to be in place uh, as early as possible. Oh, I doubt if you asked most of my colleagues if their ambition was to be the leader of the opposition, they would say no, they want to be Prime Minister. And it's a question of who succeeds David Cameron as Prime Minister after the next election. Um, it's an interesting battle, but I'll tell you something. It won't be fought out amongst the journalists and the media <laughs> bubble at Westminster, Will you but be amongst in Conservative MPs. Will you be in the battle? I'll be voting. You, you won't be standing? I think it's unlikely, but I'll certainly be voting in it. A, many people think you're, you're, you're a maypole around which the, the right-wing element of the party likes to dance. You won't... You won't yes. Throw. An you know, we, we see all we, we, hear, we, we hear all these reports of Westminster, uh, and if you take it over a period, there's virtually no one whose name is not mentioned. So, uh, let's get re-elected first, and then we can discuss it afterwards. Thank you very much, Liam Fox.